one internship that comes to April, the other one on Friday. So. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order for the Brookings County Commission for May 24th, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Next on the agenda is an invitation for a citizen to schedule a time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. I don't see anybody, nobody has signed in. So we'll move on to number four, approval of the agenda. Is there any additions or changes to the agenda? Move approval. Second. We got a second. Any further discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Consent agenda, which includes approval of the minutes, approval of travel requests, approval of personnel action notices, uh, approval of cellular authorization, approval of the human services report. I'd look for a motion for the consent agenda. Motion approved. Second. Yeah, second. Further discussion? Uh, I just would like, I think Dan was going to say something about the human services report. There were a couple of mental health issues on there that, that maybe are a little different than what we normally say. I'm not asking that it come off the consent agenda, but, but maybe an explanation of how we're reporting differently. Yeah, so those mental health um, <coughs> items on that welfare report <coughs> are not coming out of the welfare budget. They're coming out of the, the mental health budget. When the hospital has um, these notices of discharge and some of these other things like a very behavioral health, those claims end up getting submitted to the welfare office. And so um, we've chosen to put them on the welfare report, but moving forward, I talked to Commissioner Pierce, we'll create a separate report outlining specifically the mental health claims rather than putting them on the, uh, the welfare just so there's no confusion there. But yes, they are getting paid out of a different budget. And, and am I right, Dan, that that bill that was like $2,100, that was down at Avera Behavioral Health as opposed to the Human Service Center in Yankton? Correct. Was the Human Services Center full? Is that what the deal was? Yes, and part of it too is if it's a non-custody IDC, meaning that there's no criminal component to it, usually, usually the preference is to send them to a Avera, Avera Behavioral Health because um, Avera Behavioral Health doesn't accept um, individuals that are being charged criminally. Is that correct, Marty? And so in these IDC situations where there's not an arrest, Usually they go to Vera Behavioral, whereas HSC is willing to take an IDC if there's a if there's a criminal component to it as well. So in the in the past, the county, if there was room at H, down in Yankton, okay, if there was room there, we didn't allow people to pick Sioux Falls instead of Yankton because of the cost. Are people making that choice themselves then, or how's that? No, happening? it's it's availability too. Okay, I mean HSC, as you know, is usually operating at maximum capacity, so. Thank you. All right, any further comments or discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Number six on the agenda, approval of claims. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion on the claims. There was a handout this morning. Um, there are a couple additional claims that um, I think got added in later, were changed <coughs> kind of late after the, the packet was published. Um, that handout was is in front of you. Okay. Any comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. All right, department head reports. Uh, we will start with Misty so she can uh, take off and get back out spraying. <laughs> that was a request by her, by the way. So. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Good morning. Good morning. So just a quick update. I want to let you know that our budget line, our overall budget is good. Um, but just wanted to let you know that 4260 was in the negative truck repairs that we did in the amount of $5,000. Um, I've essentially got that changed so that um, 
when repairs come in from the highway department that they come out of line 4250. Misty, can you pull your the microphone down a little bit? So it's more. Thank you. Can you hear me better now? Sorry. I uh, just wanted to let you know that overall budget is still okay. Um, and with the chemical line, that's going to be also, we're going to be over budget on that this year. Um, is there any questions on the budget? Okay. We have our crew out where spots rain spurge. We're seeing thistle out there, but we can't see that from the trucks yet. It's not quite tall enough. So we're still spot spraying with the four wheelers and um, the Kubota. And we're also hitting the brush that the highway department has cut. We have little saplings coming back. So we're trying to keep up with that also. Um, also, I just want to let you know on June 9th, we have a good, bad, ugly, well, similar looking weed plant tour. And that's up at Leola, South Dakota. So on June 9th, I have put a travel request in. On June 9th, I will be traveling up there. Any questions for me? All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, Bob. Good morning. Good morning. We had a slight storm come through, and earlier that day, they is on May 12th, Thursday, they issued a tornado watch for the area, and then of course we started monitoring stuff. We was doing real good in the office and the building. We had the tornado shelter or severe weather shelter open. We was tracking the storm real good. It turned dark as as it could be outside, and then the power went out. And so much for for well laid plans, but. Uh, we had in the after action review we'll we'll take a look at some of the stuff but uh, we lost power for over 28 hours in the city of brookings county personnel we we they opened an emergency operations center up over at the east fire station which is also the county emergency operations center and we basically ran that as a joint operation the city was doing their stuff and then i was me and commissioner borsema and commissioner jensen and Com commissioner krogman went to that facility and basically worked out of that facility as needed. And I had staff back here in this office, in this building, taking calls for from the county side of the house. And um, of course on May 13th, starting May 12th, the highway department did an excellent job opening as many roads as possible. One of the issues they had was power lines down. It's, it, you know, what, what are you going to do if you're driving a vehicle and there's a power line down and you don't know it's energized? You're def definitely not going to run over it. So they had their hands full also on the 13th, and they continued on. And um, on the 13th, we, we basically started a recovery phase, and it will be long-term. County Equalization Office, they went out Friday and started doing assessments for me, and they're still continuing on. And, and we had to turn all of our assessments in on Friday to the Office of Emergency Management so they can compile them and get them to the governor's office. And and at that level, they'll make a determination, <coughs> excuse me, determination for disaster. But all the other county offices provided support as needed. We worked with the 211 center to ensure <coughs> to ensure that the public and citizens had a place to call and report their damage assessment. 211 has got the formatted forms and the operators to take calls and ask the right questions. That's why we, we focus them towards 211. The American Red Cross also did damage assessment for us. They, they sent that paperwork. There's one, one VOAD, Volunteer Organizations Active in Disasters, named Samaritan <coughs> Samaritan's Purse. They're operating in Brookings County. The, the Red Cross trailer was deployed to Madison at the request of the American Red Cross. We did not have a need to open a shelter. We had, I want to say, probably two people contacted the Red Cross for sheltering assistance. Madison had a, a trailer park that was destroyed, so the decision was made to open a shelter up in Madison. Brookings, they determined, did not have a need. We had enough hotel rooms 
in the town, although no power, it'd be kind of hard to get into them. Uh, contact, of course, was made at the National Weather Service from day one, and uh, we sent what photographs we had, and, and uh, I can say that the citizens of, of Brookings County assisted me in that. They, um, they allowed me to share their photographs with the National Weather Service so we could show people what we had. In t later in today's meeting, we're going to talk about rescinding the burn ban. And one thing we do need to discuss is the building permit process. And, and there's a lot of buildings down. From what I can tell from our damage assessment, there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot of roof damage, which we don't typically give building permits for roofs in Brookings County. So that's, that's um, not necessary. But where we've got a lot of damage is going to be our outbuildings. And um, I guess we are looking for guidance from the county commission on do we want to try to give a discount on building permits or, or what's the thought of the county commission on that? I think that's on the agenda for later. Bob. Oh, is it later too? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll do that later. Let me go back to the other page. All right. Uh, I'm working on a drainage inquiry that we received yesterday. Tomorrow I'll, I'll do some more research and get back to them. They had a stormwater committee canceled today. Tomorrow I'm running up to Dubrook School in White to do a safety inspection. On Thursday, Department of Public Safety Deputy, Deputy Secretary Dan Lust, Office of Emergency Management Director Tina Titsy, and uh, Public Assistance Coordinator Amanda Vander Platz will be visiting my office at 4 o'clock if any commissioner wants to swing by and, and talk to them. They're stopping by to see what, how the response is and if they can provide any assistance to us. And they'll be here about 4 o'clock. They're going up to Coddington County first stopping back in the Castlewood and talk to Dave Schaefer out of Hamlin County and then come into Brookings. What date and time was that? Four o'clock on okay. Thursday. On Thursday. Okay. What I plan on doing is I got a, a large map in my office. I'm going to, once I get equalizations numbers, I'm going to put dots on the map to show how widespread the damage was in Brookings County. And that's all I have at this time. We've got plats and everything else coming up. I will be stepping out from 9.30 to 9.45 to go on the radio, but other than that, I'll be back in, in my chair. Yes, ma'am. Bob, on, on those assessments that are being done, is that just damages that are outside municipalities that you want called into 211, or is it? in municipalities as well as out in the county? Anything within Brookings County is going to be counted towards our damage assessment, ma'am. Including the municipality? By all means. Okay. And then what is it that's going to be done with assessments? We will, we have to sort out the assessments between regular buildings, outbuildings, because those won't count. What we have to do is go through all the data and any of the residences that's damaged, we're going to report those to peer to see if there's enough for what's known as individual assistance. Individual assistance is extremely hard to get and you gotta have a high value dollar damage. And so that, that's, why, that's why we're asking for the assistance from the public. Tell us what you've got and, and all we can do is assemble the information, send it forward and they take a look at it. The public, the public assistance is separate. That's when you talk about our infrastructure and, and all that. We've, we've had so many power lines down, it's not going to be difficult, I don't think, to get public assistance for the government. But, but the reason for 211 and why we're requesting people to call in is, in, is to try to get individual assistance. Okay. I had somebody call and ask me that, and I said I, I did not know if there would be individual assistance. And once assistance. again, there's no, we're not making promises that we're ever going to get right. individual assistance. A lot of people are asking for, for help, and we understand that. And uh, all we can do is try to assemble the paperwork and ship it on and go from there. So I was out of state when the storm happened, so I don't know the answer to this question. Did we use IPAWS? We did not. Okay. The reason for that is, well, when I started the meeting off, what, what statement did I make? That we was in a tornado watch. At no time did Brookings County, was there a tornado warning issued. So, so we're only using IPAWS for 
tornado warnings, we're not using it for... Typically a tornado warning, or if, or if the National Weather Service sends out a, a statement of, of severity, They're, they've got a statement that talks about severity, and even then, but by the time I would be able to set up IPAWs, the National Weather Service would force out their own IPAWs on, on top of me, because they've got that capability also. So and there, the big reason, not to interrupt you, but the big reason we got IPAWs also is for severe weather, and blizzard warnings, and we, we typically use it for blizzard warnings and stuff like that in the winter time. But we also have it for our local emergency planning committee and hazardous materials. If there's ever a hazardous material spill, that's where I pause. I can circle, I can circle a spot on a map, whether it's a small town or a whatever, and we can send out a, a dedicated message to that area. It would just seem to me that maybe we ought to be reassessing our policy on that. That this would have been the type of event that we should have been sending an alert out to all of our citizens on through iPods. And do I remember right, that comes across everybody's cell phone as a, as a text message then? Unless they opt out of it. Yeah, yes, unless they opted out. It just, that seems to me like this event was the perfect event for us to use our iPods. And I understand what you're saying, Bob, but yeah. Yeah, but, well, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to argue yeah. with you well, by, no, by any no. stretch with, without... The way the system formed, and you can look on the radars, the way the system formed, it, 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 by the time we realized what it was and everything turned black on us, we lost power, and I couldn't have sent right. iPods out anyway. Yeah. So I get it. I, Thank, you. Thank you. I mean, we, we balance the best we can. That, that's all I can do. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Brian? Well, the construction season's getting to be here in full. I've had quite a few meetings with uh, other governments um, in regards to their projects, a uh, few, few meetings for our bridges, um, kind of on a standstill on the Sinai Bridge. A um, uh, couple of highlights in my report. We've uh, began our asphalt patching on our chip seal routes. Um, I attended the groundbreaking for the 20th Street Interchange Project. Um, aside from that, I'm going to go right into the storm. I've got a, a map kind of highlighting here. I don't know if we can pull that up um, or where i got to put that. But uh, I also have an updated map. We're about, I would say, roughly 60% done. Uh, we kind of started on the south side of the county and we're working our way north. Um, uh, basically, we got everything south of 14 uh, kind of cleaned up with that's uh, down trees in the right of way. Uh, you can kind of see uh, some areas are more concentrated than others. But uh, we are continuing to work on that. Uh, the night of the storm, we lost two buildings, uh, the east shed. Of, of the main shop, um, ended up in Pioneer Park, and the brew shop was uh, down down to the motor grader. Um, we're completed with the cleanup in the Pioneer Park and and dang near all the way to 14. We got we had a lot of tin uh, blow off our sheds and end up in the alleyways and city uh, city lot there. We got that cleaned up on Monday. Um, our brew shop, actually today we are working on uh, trying to extract our motor grader out of that shed. Uh, we got a plan put together. We got Prusman contracting helping us out along with our equipment. So after I leave here, that's where I'm heading to uh, see if we can't get that motor grader out before it rains. Um, so that was kind of the wrap of that. We the night of the storm, the crews were out. We had uh, four loaders, kind of cover four quadrants of the county. Um, started about six o'clock, and the the guys were leaving about eleven o'clock. Uh, the next morning, we came in and we uh, fixed all the the main signs, the stop signs, to get them back up. 
And then uh, we came in Monday and began the, the removal process. Um, met with safety benefits last week. Uh, kind of went and looked at all of our shops, still waiting to hear from the adjusters. Um, I've had a few or one contractor already stop by and look at the roof on the main shop. Um, we lost, I would say, probably maybe a third of the roof foam. So when it rains outside, it's raining inside. Um, kind of tried to plug some of that stuff up. I was up on the roof last Wednesday, um, but there's it's pretty extensive damage. The the wind actually peeled back the the roofing membrane on a on a fairly large chunk on the south side. Um, kind of unplugged everything and and shut the breakers off in the areas that that were affected there, but. Uh, Got a contractor also going to look at the uh, east wall of the of the Sinai building. That wall is separated from the roof. Um, I don't know if we can fix that or not, but uh, going to have somebody that maybe knows a little more about construction than I do to to take a look at it to see if we can't salvage what we got. And uh, that's about all I got. I don't know the answer to this and maybe Stacy does our insurance that we carry on those this one or is that um he stated <laughs> it was replacement value is it replacement I believe so I know we've got claims <coughs> submitted but they're so backed up to yeah. I don't know that they've been here but we've got our claims submitted for them for them and the representative I met with uh, Todd Todd uh, Eden, he, he's the owner of the safety benefits so uh, he kind of gave me a few pointers on what to do or you know what to take pictures of um, as far as that goes and in the documentation that we need to do I, I got the forms filled out and and he took a gander over them to to make sure they had the information they needed and like like we said it's been submitted um, to the Claims Associates just uh, have, waiting to hear from the adjusters. But it, they indicated replacement. That's that's what Todd said. Was there any personal property in in our sheds that had damage that got damaged? Thank you. That's what I was wondering. The motor graders that covered under safety benefits too. Yes. Um, we don't know the extent of the damage, but we did file. A claim but I couldn't put what was damaged on there yet until we get it out of the building all right we did have some other vehicles in our shed too that belong I suppose to the sheriff's department and I don't know if those are covered or yeah, is that under I believe the sheriff's they've policy been, they've been over to look at the sheriff's vehicles so I'm not sure if it's the same adjuster or not but they have taken a review with them I think there was some windows knocked out is that correct Marty and we had we had several windows um, one payloader uh, two skid loaders and I believe it was two pickups got windows knocked out uh, from the debris from the building thank you all right thanks Brian yep <clears throat> Marty Morning. We, we have a nine o'clock too, so I may I may cut you off. I'll, I'll I'll be quick. All right, six minutes quick. Yep. Anyway, we have. Uh, I'll try, Leon. I'll try. Anyway, right now we have uh, twenty nine of our own inmates in jail. I got four from Moody County and one from DOC. So our numbers have staying staying fairly low. Um, we made it through the storm. Um, with uh, Dave Beitler's uh, quote is seamless. Uh, when the lights went out, generators kicked in, nobody even knew it in the jail. The only time the inmates knew there was a storm out because we lost cable TV. You know, And it wasn't because of the generators, because they lost cable TV. That's the only way they knew there was a storm because they're all asking for their cable TV. So anyway, otherwise it was seamless. Uh, our big worry was diesel fuel to make sure we had enough diesel fuel. Uh, the, for the jail is 1,000 gallons. 
And uh, we topped it off on Friday afternoon, and we'd used like 250. So from, from that 28 hours, we probably used 300 gallons maybe out of the big generator. So, but, uh, um, you know, there was a, it, it's, it, you don't realize a lot of this until something like this happens. You know, I went down to Martin's to make sure we had diesel fuel and to top it off and that. He was struggling getting diesel into his truck because he had no electricity for pumps, so they were doing gravity fill. And uh, that was taking a while, but... Uh, and then everybody that had a, a, a generator was looking for diesel. So, but we made it through, and, and, and when everything else was dark, you could see a shine at the sheriff's office. <laughs> the lights were bright, just like, just like normal anyway. So, um, What we did also is I had three cars damaged. Um, I had one car damaged over in White, and actually it was caused by them moving trees. Uh, I think the city of White's probably going to pick up the tab for that car. Uh, another car, um, he's just, he was trying to hunker down somewhere. He's caught in the storm, lost uh, some back windows, and then uh, the side of the car was all peppered with uh, um, rocks and stones and things like that. The, my biggest damage is a pickup at the, at the highway shop, and we haven't even got the bill yet on that, but it took most of the windows out, and things hit it, and there's dents all over it, and it's almost, uh, it's going to be a while before I get that on the road. But that's okay because the, the one that drives that is actually at the academy, so yeah, it, it's, it's working out okay. Um, you know, the night of the storm, we called everybody out, first responders in all the towns. If we didn't have the volunteers in all the towns at the fire departments, we would really be in trouble. But White and Volga, and they were going around, and they know where their elderly people are, and they were checking on homes and things like this. So then that freed my guys up not to have to worry about that type of thing. Well, ours was mainly down power lines, and then they, it, it, we couldn't keep up with down power lines. And one of the things we couldn't keep up with was barricades because, you know, we are calling the highway department for barricades. They're busy trying to clear roads and, and trying to get barricades and and the fire department would come out and block roads for us because we had a lot of power lines that were live yet and, and those types of things. So what's great, if there's anything good about this is we had very few injuries. And the, uh, the injuries we did have was the semi was uh, tipped over on 14 and had, had minor cuts uh, on him. But otherwise, we didn't have anybody that was dam you know, hurt in the building and stuff. But a lot of damage everywhere. I mean, the whole county had some damage. Um, it might... Some areas had less than others, and then it was concentrated. Uh, uh, a lot of cattle sheds, a lot of cattle uh, um, got all over the county, basically. So um, yeah, it, was, it was a mess for a while. We did about, um, like, uh, had about $1,300 in overtime on Friday night, uh, which I don't think is too bad. I sent everybody home but two deputies at 10 o'clock, which were on shift because, and I told them, this, you know, just calls for service. Don't go out on any township roads and, at this point. And until we got daylight, because we didn't know if there's what we got for down power lines and so forth. So I didn't get electricity to that following Monday, so I, I took a couple cold showers in between times. So definitely going to look into a generator. Um, unless you guys have any other questions, we did. Uh, our our biggest problem was gas. We did, we you know the gas pumps are down. We did have to. Uh, uh, Deputy Langstrat got a hold of his neighbor, and we we bought 60 gallons of gas from a farmer. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll pay him back and, and so forth. I did learn, though, Friday is that the street department has a generator. They had their gas pumps for the city police cars, and I didn't know that. But at the 911 meeting, I did ask the city manager if we could jump on board with that. And he said, as long as they got gas for them first. I think Ryan was, was there with that. So we could. Um, <clears throat> what, uh, Volga got gas first, uh, but they had so many lines. We actually had to send a car over there to keep because they were starting to get out on 14 and, and, and creating a traffic problem. So we had to go over there and, and, and direct traffic and so forth because of the gas lines and so forth. Probably the best business Friday night or late Thursday or Thursday evening and Friday was the taco truck at the Dollar General store. <laughs> that, pl that place had a generator and they were saying, selling tacos to beat the band over there. So it's about the only place you could buy food. So anyway, any questions? Okay. Right. Otherwise, Marty. I commend our local our our, our fire department, and, and the highway shop was overwhelmed yeah. with uh, with uh, getting trees off the road. And so the, we're, we're gonna, you know what's we can we're gonna go back and assess some things. You know how do we get barricades out to these roads and things like that? And 
And uh, there's a couple of us that have pickups, you know, maybe I need to go get the trailer and, and start putting barricades up if I got enough people out. So we're, we're, we're going to do some, I have a, a planning session with my department uh, tomorrow, actually. So we're going to talk about s some of this stuff. So. Marty, are you generally buying gas? Or are you getting it at the highway department? Your highway saying? department, yeah. So maybe down the road we need to put in our back pocket to think about a generator to be able to do that. And we did discuss it. I, I talked with Mike, or excuse me, uh, Commissioner Bartley about we may need just a generator just for the gas pump. I don't know. But those are some things we can talk about. Like, if, you know, hopefully we'll never have a storm to this like this again, uh, where it takes out so much stuff. Um, but, you, you know, to have the lights out for a period of time, it's, uh, you know, I talked to a, a few parents that had kids, and, you know, they said take their board games out. And they go, board games? What are board games? Because they're used to their iPods and all this stuff. So this is interesting. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. All right, we have a scheduled agenda. Uh, the second reading, a public hearing, and an action to approve ordinance 2022-02, an ordinance providing the amendment of ordinance 2018-03. This is a second reading, so I need a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. Second. Okay. Um, we will open this as a public hearing uh, to all proponents who would like to speak to this. All proponents. Okay, all opponents that would like to speak to the ordinance? All opponents. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open it for discussion. Any comments, discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we will go back to our department head reports. Uh, Lori, finance officer's report, please. Okay, you have your April and March finance office report, and also in your packet today, news, those have been paid out. Um, Division Motor Vehicles and Pier, we learned that they have decided to cancel their new system, so we are excited about that. They um, are having a hard time, like everybody, with keeping employees and programmers. So they're going to study some other states and try to pick up a program from another state that is working. So that was kind of good news. Um, new plates come out in January. They look pretty much like the plates we have now. Delinquent letters and reminder letters were sent out to property owners that didn't pay their first half of property taxes before April 30th. Interest does increase at 0.833% a month. An election season is officially underway in the office. Early voting is available on first floor of the city county building. And we're very lucky to have the return staff that we do. Um, they're very good. <clears throat> Sample ballots will be posted um, on first floor in the building. The election takes place on June 7th. In the election process, we invite anyone to come watch that night that would like to. Um, they will not be allowed in the office, but it will be um, viewable from the lobby or the hallway. We've been working on unclaimed property. These are checks that are written by our office to individuals that have not been cashed. Um, we will eventually turn those over to the South Dakota State Treasurer's Unclaimed Property Division. So if you have a cash, a check out there, please cash it. Um, I had Jennifer Beller attend the spring workshop in Pier at the beginning of May. The main talk was the ARPA program and how counties are going to be using that. Most of the counties are trying to get that into the general budget lines so it is easier to spend. 
And then I'll be having Christine attend the deputy workshop in June. That is about the highlights of the office. Questions? I have a question. On the um, report that's in the packet, the GL account total, <coughs> it says that on account, just a second, I got to look at my number here, 101413402030 blood tests that we're over budget on blood tests. And I'm just curious if anybody knows what's going on with the blood tests that we're showing up as being over budget already this year. I do not. Do you have any idea? That would just be nice if somebody could follow up on that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks. All right. Uh, Dustin submitted his report uh, for the BCOAC, so that's in the packet. The auditor's account with Treasurer for March and April, payroll and additive totals for March and April, Iowa expenditure report for March and April, and register of deed statement of fees collected for March and April. So those are be it noted items under the finance officer's report. Um, we'll move on then to number eight, regular business. Uh, this is a first reading of Ordinance 2022-03, an ordinance amending 2007-2 revised subdivision ordinance for Brookings County, South Dakota, and providing for the administration, enforcement, and amendment thereof, pursuant to South Dakota codified law 11-2 and amendments thereof. Whereas the board, the board of County Commissioners has appointed a County Planning Commission, hereafter referred to Planning Commission, to recommend appropriate regulations to be enforced herein, and whereas the Planning Commission has recommended amendments to the 2007-2 revised subordinates subdivision ordinance pertaining to the Brookings County, whereas the Planning Commission has given reasonable consideration, among other things, to the character of the subdivision regulations and their suitability, whereas the Planning Commission has made preliminary report and sub submitted it to the Board of County Commissioners, and whereas the Board of County Commissioners has given due public notice of a hearing related to such and has held such public hearings and whereas all requirements of South Dakota codified law 11-2 with regard to the preparation of these re revised regulations and subsequent action of the Board of County Commissioners has been met and whereas the Brookings County South Dakota Board of County Commission deems it necessary for the purpose of promoting the health safety and the general welfare of the county to adopt a revised subdivision ordinance. Therefore, be it ordained that the 2007 revised subdivision ordinance is hereby amended as attached here by the Board of County Commissioners, Brookings, South Dakota. Um, first reading is today. Second reading will be June 21st, 2022. All right. We'll move on to under regular business letter B, action to approve resolution 22-17, a resolution to rescind, rescind the ban, burn ban enacted April 19th, 2022. Look for a motion to approve. So moved. moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Bob? Yes, yes, sir. Due to wet weather conditions and the need to burn trees, um, Brookings County Fire Chief Association Chairperson Dave Jacobson contacted my office and requested that we redact the burn ban. Discussion. Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter C, action to approve resolution 22-18, a plat of tract one in the southeast quarter of section 34, township 112 north, range 48 west of the 5th Prime Meridian, Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Comments? This was heard in our May Regularly scheduled planning and zoning meeting approved unanimously and sent to this board with a recommendation that you approve it. All right. Further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter D, action to approve resolution 22-19, a plat of lot one of Lucinda Olson edition in the southeast quarter of the southeast quarter of section 17, township 112 north, range 40. Nine West, the Fifth Prime Meridian, Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Discussion comments. Once again, we heard it in the May meeting, approved unanimously, and sent to this board with a recommendation you approve it. All right. 
Comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Progman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter E, action to approve resolution 22-20 of plat of lots 19A and 20A of DeWitt subdivision being a replat of the south half of lot 16 and all of lots 17, 18, 19, and 20 of DeWitt subdivision of government lots 3 and 4, section 33, township 109 north, range 50 west, the 5th primarium, Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, comments. And once again, where you heard it in, in the May planning and zoning meeting sent to this board as a recommendation, you approve it. Further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Letter F, action to approve abatement 22-38, an abatement application made by Walter Osterberg, Jr. for parcel 2299-5-0004-209-00 in the amount of one hundred eleven dollars and thirty eight cents. Motion one? motion approved. Second. Discussion. Comments. Thing on this, I think both finance uh, and Jacob both approved this. Mm -hmm. So all right. Please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, letter G, action to approve agreement twenty two dash forty nine agreement. By and between Teamsters Local Union Number 120 affiliated with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and the Brookings County Sheriff's Department. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion. Comments. We went through the union negotiation process last week and have contracts before you um, now for both the sheriff, uh, sheriffs and highway department. All right. Any further discussion? Hey, none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter H, action to approve agreement 22-50, an agreement by and between Teamsters Local Union number 120 affiliated with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and the Brookings County Highway Department. Is there a motion? Motion approved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter I, action to approve agreement 22-51, a letter of understanding regarding Article 22-work week and Article 47-wages, amending agreement number 19-45, an agreement by and between Teamsters Local Union number 120 affiliated with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and the Brookings County Sheriff's Department. Is there a motion? Motion approved. Second. Discussion? This LOU speaks to two different things. Um, the, there is, um, the sheriff's department uh, is interested in going to, or having eight, 10, and 12 hour shift options. That's where the work week piece comes in, so that speaks to that. And the sp second part is uh, with wages is a July 1 of this year increase um, that was discussed as part of the negotiation process as well. So it just spells out what that looks like for the sheriff's office. And then kind of speaking to the next piece too, um, the next item is with the highway is just wages because um, the, the scheduling was specific to sheriff. Discussion, further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letters J, action to approve agreement 22-52, a letter of understanding regard article 39-wages, amending agreement number 19-44-an agreement by and between Teamsters uh, Local Union number 120 affiliated with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and the Brookings County Highway Department. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Oh. I'd like to say one thing while we're on this topic. I want to thank Stacy and Kristen for these last four or five items that we've approved. They did an amazing job in, in yeah. making all this come together. Thank you. Please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter K, action to approve agreement 22-53, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by East River Electric Power Cooperative, Inc., in Brookings Township. Is there a motion? Motion approved. Is there a second? 
Socket discussion. It's underground uh, accompanying one of their overhead line projects. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter L, action to approve agreement 22-54, an application of occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Rick Even in Richland Township. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? It's a well water crossing on County Road 35 near the intersection of 212 or County Road 32, just north of 14. What can I question? Uh, what application is is he required? It, I mean, for like our other. He has to register this with the the eight one one, so it can be located as a utility. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley. Aye. Jensen. Aye. Pierce. Aye. Krogman. Aye. Motion carries. 9:15, and we have a scheduled agenda item number B: public hearing and action to approve a one-day special events license for Andrea Diedrich J Street Pub at Bennett Barn for July 9th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we will open the public hearing for all proponents. All proponents for this. Please state your name and pull the microphone up so we can hear yeah. you, please. I'm Andrea Diedrich. Um, we're just uh, doing a bartending for uh, a wedding there on the July 9th. We've done it in the past and it's worked well. Thank you. Thank you. Any more proponents? Okay. Any opponents? Any opponents? Okay, we will close the public hearing. Comments or discussion from? Go ahead. Um, just for the... Uh, listening public, um, all alcoholic beverage license issued by Brookings County um, are subject to a number of provisions and public hearing is one of the provisions. Um, we've looked at the application and our office recommends approval. Okay, is there discussion? I'm just too curious what the sheriff has in, in store. One thing that our office is going to do um, just a little bit different is that we are going to have, um, Andrea, we'll have you post just kind of a, like a sign that we've created. Um, just if we if the sheriff's office does stop out, they're able to see that you have a license. You know, it's just it's visible. There's no questions asked. And so. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, letter M, uh, action to approve agreement 22-55, an application of occupancy of right-of-way for county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy in Trenton Township. Is there a motion? So move. move. Second. Discussion? These next few that you're going to consider are feeding uh, underground into uh, residential or farm places. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter N, action to approve agreement 22-56, an application of occupancy of right-of-way for county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy in Preston Township. Is there a motion? Motion no. approved. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter O, action to approve agreement 22-57, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy in Brookings Township. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter P, action to approve agreement 22-58, an application of occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy in Brookings Township. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. 
We will move back to uh, another scheduled agenda item. Um, I see our applicant is here. So this is a uh, letter C, retail on and off malt beverage and South Dakota wine, wine license for SVK properties, so known as Midway Camp. Um, we have this has been tabled from our May 3rd, so I, I need a motion to remove it from the table, please. Moved. Second. Please, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now we have a public hearing and action to approve. Um, we had a motion uh, by Bartley, seconded by Krogman on the, the third. Now we need to open this for public hearing. So we'll open it for public hearing for the proponents of the liquor license. The proponents. Morning, Todd. Could you Good morning. state, state your <clears throat> name, name, please? My name is Todd Voss, and I own uh, Midway Camp. Um, I guess I'd just like to apologize for the what happened and uh, let you know that we've had some strict discussions on <coughs> what needs to happen going forward. I've told them to card every single person that comes in the door, even if they have gray hair like me. And a couple times I've stopped there, and they actually carded me. Um, not really an excuse but the guy that was working that night just filled in our manager had quit on Tuesday night and it was his first night actually bartending so um, I think he learned a lesson also okay. so is there any more proponents round for questions Todd I just no go ahead just sit close by there if we have questions um, any more Proponents. Okay, any opponents? Any <coughs> opponents? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open it for just comments and discussion. Are your staff at Midway, are they have they completed the state training? Some have, some have not. As you know, staff are cheap, so a lot of times by the time you get them certified, they move on to something different. So we try. I just say you realize why uh, this was tabled before is because uh, um, our ordinance states that you have to appear in person. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 We saw. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, we had a letter from you that you were seeing your brother. So sorry to see about his passing. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Todd. All right. Moving on to letter Q, action to approve agreement 22-59, an agreement with the South Dakota Department of Transportation to provide for the striping and continuing maintenance of county roads with Brookings County. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion and comments? This will also encompass... Uh, the lack of striping that we had planned from last year. They rolled the funding from last year into this year. Um, so you're going to see a lot more of our roads get retraced this year. Um, I know we got our chip seal routes done, but we, we had a lot of roads that we were going to retrace, and that's going to be uh, rolled in from the 2021 also. Have uh, Has the state... Do they have a contractor that's going to be able to do this, or is it a paint issue? Or I'm from what I'm told, they you know they don't let this until June. And uh, last year, only one region in the state, uh, the Mitchell region, uh, got paint. But according to what the DOT officials have stated, is the the other regions are going to take priority um, because there possibly could be a paint shortage. All right. Any further discussion? Comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter R, action to approve agreement 22-60, a state of South Dakota joint powers financial and maintenance agreement between the Department of Transportation and Brookings County, South Dakota for project number PH0010, parentheses 157, 
PCN 06 U8 on 476th Avenue adjacent to US Highway 14 and 212th Street adjacent to 486th Avenue. Is there an action to approve? So move. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. These are rumble strips on Brookings County Road 23 north of Aurora and rumble strips on Brookings County 35 um, or 486th that or yeah. 486th Avenue, just to the north of 14, for stop signs. So these are for the stop signs? Yeah, rumble strips for stop signs. Gotcha. gotcha. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Better S, action to approve the 2022 Bridge Improvement Grant Project uh, BRF 6361, parentheses 00, 22-5. Brookings County, PCN 08WY, letting authorization. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion comments? This was a grant Brookings County was awarded. It's uh, for structure number 0615215. Uh, this structure is located on Brookings County Road 19, north of Lake Campbell. Um, we were awarded that project uh, from the state this year as a build ready. Um, we anticipate if we advertise this for bid, this will not be uh, constructed until next year due to availability of materials. And then we, we do the same route for detours, similar to the, when we rehab that bridge that was just to the south, south of that? Yeah, we we will not allow this to start until that bridge is completed if a contractor can get materials but the likelihood of getting materials um and then i will provide a detour map um once we order a contract gotcha. okay all right any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign motion carries letter t action to approve retail on and off so, uh, sale Malt Beverage and South Dakota Farm Wine License for Beach Bums, Inc., Dance Land, also known as Dance Land Campground. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second? Second. Second. Discussion, comments? Yes, this uh, applicant um, has an issue that they need to clear up with the Department of Revenue. Um, before applying for any other type of licenses. So my recommendation to you would be to uh, deny the application and then um, the applicant can reapply for the on-off malt beverage um, once they clear up what they need to with the Department of Revenue. Okay. Further you. discussion? Is there a waiting period if we deny versus tabling? Um, so right now they haven't, um, right now there's a, there is no waiting period. No. And in Brickings County, we can issue, um, as many malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine licenses that you want. Um, so right now, if we deny it, um, they just won't have the license to be able to use and to operate. They do have an issue going on right now. So, uh, Right now, they are unable to serve even liquor, so they need to get that cleared up before um, applying for anything else. So, okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Opposed, same sign. No. 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 The motion fails. Move on then to letter U. Action to approve the purchase of trees for the courthouse grounds. Need a move, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. And if you recall, we spent some money last year to have our courthouse trees cleaned up, do some pruning, remove some trees that needed to come out. And the recommendation is that we put in some additional trees. I did. Um, <clears throat> look at Six Mile Nursery and a couple other places and brought in uh, a proposal, but I'm not asking for approval of this particular uh, invoice. 
what I'm asking today is maybe you would authorize me to spend up to $4,000 for trees and um, planting of those trees at the courthouse. What I'd like to do now that I've got an idea of what's available, and, and I didn't want to wait till too far into the summer, mainly because I think we're going to have a tree shortage once everybody gets their uh, trees removed from the storm and start planting. But um, I'd like to walk the grounds one more time with the, the person that will do the, the planting and make sure that we've got trees in places where the light's right. And then Stacy said she thought perhaps that the um, maintenance people at the courthouse could water this summer so that we could get those trees started. So I, I guess what I'm asking for is <clears throat> authority to spend up to $4,000 on trees and planting trees at the courthouse. We might, once we look at our shade versus sun, swap some of these trees out for a different kind of tree. Okay. Further discussion? Do we is, this, is this particular pur purchase agreement right now specific trees? So if we pass this, are we locked into those specific trees? I don't listed? think you approve this specifically. I think you do what Leanne suggested, um, just approve an up to dollar amount, and then we can um, work with the experts to make sure we get the right trees in the right places um, and get them planted. So. This was to give us an idea of what's available. What's being yeah. recommended is that we stay away from our traditional spruce, elm, maple, because of disease issues. And so this is a sample of some things that are available that would right. put us outside of that. Leanna, would you, I, I think maybe an amendment would be help to, uh, to clarify. So if you want to make amendments to yours there, we'll see if we can get a second. I would make an amendment to the motion that um, we'd be authorized to spend up to $4,000 for trees and installation at the courthouse. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion on the amendment. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, voting on the approval as amended. Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. All right, letter V, action to approve a request for $500 for the Elkton Special Days Committee for the annual fireworks display. Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Stacey, any comments? This is an annual request from them. This would come out of your public relations line in the commission budget. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. Letter W, action to approve a request to fill vacancy for administrative assistant in the equalization office. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion, comments? This is due to a retirement. Okay. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Letter X, action to approve request to fill vacancy for two full-time correctional officers in the Sheriff's Department. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Comments? This is... Again, some additional correctional officers per the uh, presentation that was held um, probably six weeks ago, a couple months ago now from the sheriff's office requesting additional help with um, now that the, the new jail is online. All right, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Letter Y, dis discussion and possible action to continue the Madari Township drainage study. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Comments? Bob? Good morning. We are to the stage in the Madari Township drainage that we're ready to start contacting the public, and we got a quote from Banners Associate to continue. So all I'm doing is... is Requesting this is a, a letter uh, acknowledgement of acceptance. I didn't want to sign it without 
this board understanding they're proposing an additional $26,909, and this would be for the landowner contact in landowner meetings. They would, they would prepare their meeting materials for us. They would meet with landowners. They're estimating up to 20 landowner meetings, one hour each. And then um, after all this, then we, they would prepare minutes for all the meetings. They'd perform, pre prepare a, um, the documentation that, that we need. We will, our obligations would be to participate in the meetings and provide available information as needed. And um, this just literally came in overnight, so I, we knew it was coming. We put the request in as a as an action item, if you so so see. And if if you want more information, I would be able to send you this document, and we could hear it again in the next meeting. But I just assume they start moving moving the pro process along. It's a budgeted item. It's not. I'm I'm not asking for additional funding. All right. Further discussion. Hearing none, please call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Uh, letter Z, discussion and possible action on adding the pandemic planning and coordination financials to the emergency management budget. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. Discussion and comments. Yes, sir. What I've got is in my budget line when I – we had a thing called Community Emergency Response Team. It was a budget line item of uh, 226-4222-4294. We disbanded the, the CERT program in 2013, and I would like to replace that particular budget line item with your permission with a, a different committee called Pandemic Planning Coordination Committee slash Points of Dispensing using the abbreviation PPCC slash POD pod. And what this, what this would do is it would allow us to pay all bills through the county out of that line item. Any money, I, I, in, in the June budget hearings next month, I do propose a 2023 budget for this, but we would also like to at, there's some paperwork we're going to have to develop with the with the state's attorney's office and probably the hospital's attorney's office to make sure everything's good. And then we've got some money sitting there that we could possibly put into this line item this year, with your permission, of course. But uh, the starting point is to get this. And what this would be is the committee and the meetings would fall under my office. The, the equipment itself and the supplies falls under the hospital because it's all medical medical type scenario. We, and the agreement would be the hospital would maintain and keep the inventory and all that on the supply issue. I'd maintain the, the register and maintain the meetings and that, and we work as a, as a joint team. The actual the Pandemic Planning Coordination Committee slash pod is made up of South Dakota State University, City of Brookings, Brookings County, and the American Red Cross. That's the four originating parties in, in the thing. And this basically would make Brookings County as the, the lead for the meetings and the hospital the lead for the equipment. And we'd still include the American Red Cross and, and the South Dakota State University as partners in, in the group. We're not trying to shove anybody out the door. We just want to be able to, and, and part of this is, I'd, I'd like the committee to be allowed to do similar to what my planning and zoning committee does. If we have a meeting, we're allowed to provide water and cookies or some kind of light light refreshments. Does this include facility or rent and what else is included? Well, we at this time we have no facility rent. What would happen is if we have a pan, if we have a, a need for a facility then that would very well come out of this. But in, in the past, we have been able to use facilities because of the partnership with the whole community. We have So far, we haven't had to pay rent. It may come to that, of course. but And that's why the big thing is we don't want this committee to fall apart. We don't want it to, to stop meeting and all of a sudden people stop coming to the meetings. We feel it's a strong organization. 
I, I sent you a report on April 28th. You know, it's been around since March 9th, 2006 was the first, first pandemic and influenza summit. And then Bob McGrath and Jan Kleitz from Brookings area was, was the driving force in the beginning. And once, once Jan left, Louise Cool took over basically her spot. And then once Bob McGrath left, they that left me never filling his his shoes, but falling into place on, on what he, he was able to do. I agree. It's a very valuable committee, and uh, a lot of people are very thankful that we had the points of dispensing. So, and, and we may never see another pandemic shot clinic again. And then again, there may be some some other flu or something like that. And typically what would happen in the past, we would, we would have uh, the, the state would offer flu shots to a certain population and we'd set up the pod and, and work as a group and, and administer those, those shots as, a, as part of the exercise. And of course, it, it technically falls under the Department of Health for funding. If we can get some grants, we may very well get the grants. And of course, that would be put into this line item. And Hopefully the county commission would agree that if, it, if we get a Department of Health grant for the, for the pod or the PPCC, that we're allowed to expend the money towards that. It, it, so, Bob, I thought you came sometime in the last couple of months and said this group was going to form uh, some kind of entity of its own. I can't remember what it was. We tried that, ma'am. Okay, so what happened? It costs like a thousand dollars to go 501c3 and, and all that would be a standalone entity. Okay, so the group is not going to be a standalone entity. No, the, okay, the, so that that's changed. The, correct. That that in the entity would fall under us, and the only other requirement that I didn't mention in here would be the workman's comp. Mm -hmm. They would fall anyone that, that doesn't already have workman's comp through the through the the workplace, like the retiree side of the house. We'd have to submit a list every year, similar to my storm spotting list, to the county commission and cover them under Brookings County workman's comp. So in the in the past, I always had the impression that you ran this group, but okay, no. because you organized the meetings and did everything. How will how will this be different other than we'll have a line item in our budget? From that's, how that's, we've that's, that, in the past? that's the only difference. Any money that comes in will be funneled into that line item, and then. This, this county commission would have to approve whatever expenditures we make due to. And grant monies that have come in in the past that that, have, group that was always done through the through the hospital. Okay, that's always gone through yeah. the hospital. And now the hosp the hospital doesn't want to deal with any workman's comp issues with non hospital employees, and we have no issue with that because of the way that we, we work with. I think it's appropriate that it go underneath the county at this particular point in time rather than the hospital anyway. So, I think it's it's a good move. That's our workers' comp volunteer list? Yeah. Is that yeah. what we're talking yeah. about? Yes, ma'am. And it wouldn't be the whole, I got 80, 86 volunteers. It wouldn't be all of them on the list. It would be the ones that's not covered by workman's comp on a, in a different, like any, anybody from Brookings County is already covered under workman's comp, so I don't need to re, right. repay for them. But what, we're, but what we're saying is that, say we had another pod, right? And any volunteer that came out would be covered by our workers' comp volunteer if, policy? If, if the name is submitted to the county commission and approved. Is that an issue that we need to discuss with our workers' comp insurer? We already ran this past them, and that's how they said that we would have to handle it, is that anybody that you, that the commission would want to cover with our work comp would be have to be listed in the minutes, just as we do now for the RSOs out of the BCOAC and our storm spotters. So... Um, there's a fee for that, but it's pretty minimal. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, letter AA, discussion and possible action on waiving building permit fees for buildings damaged from the May 12, 2022 storm event. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Uh, second. Second. Okay. Discussion, comments. We took a lot of damage, and the majority of the damage is going to be outbuildings. I don't have an exact total from the Department of Equalization yet. They're the ones going out and, and doing a lot on it. it uh, back in 2002, we had a, a 
F zero tornado come through Sinai and snaked all throughout the county, actually all the way over to Elkton. And um, back then we waived the building permit fees. That was a localized incident and, and not massive. This is a massive disaster. I've got reports all the way from from Lake Hendricks Township all the way down to Sinai. So I guess we're looking for guidance from the county commission on. What dollar amount total we're talking about? Well, I've heard there's over a million dollars worth of damage. So if we had a million dollars in buildings, how much would the building permit be? Probably about, um, I guess I I, I'm, I don't have my figures in front of me, but $250,000 up, up to that, depending on this kind type of building. A typical a $50,000 pole barn is going to cost you $148 for a permit, so I guess the only, and I don't know where the million dollar came from. I don't know what type of building. Some buildings are inspected, some buildings are not. Our biggest fear is if we give free building permits, we can't very well expect our building inspector who's a contractor to go out and inspect everything free. So there's, there's going to be a cost no matter what to a person getting a building permit. Because the inspection fees, I can't waive. I, unless the county commission wants to pay those, is the only way I'd be able to waive those. And, uh, but even if we waive fees, still have to have a building permit. Yes, to, to rebuild. And that allows us to maintain, you know, I, I don't know the condition of the buildings that went down, but typically a building built under the modern building codes go up to 90 mile an hour winds. Of course, there's predicted, it was predicted that there might have been 110 mile an hour winds in the storm, so that, that could have brought some of them down. And it's going to range anywhere from your barns to your grain bins and everything else. Some of the, some of these they had a building from it a year ago and built them and some of the, they're gonna have to rebuild. Um, but you want to still keep the integrity of having them rebuilt to your to, to, to the, the building codes. Yes, to the we, codes we, correct. Does this, this do all building permits? So if even if somebody didn't have damage, no, no, this would be dan This would be storm related. Storm related that they they can come in my office and they say I got a building down and I pull my nice little assessment list from two one one up, and they're not on the list, then they'd have to do some some heavy talking to me, or my office on on why why didn't they report it. That's one of the important reasons to use two one one to let us know that you've got damage. That and equalization. Obviously, if equalization goes out and gives me a list of a building damaged by the storm, I, I, I would go by that. Why don't we talk a million dollars worth of damage right now and the number of people and visits you're going to have in your office to request these permits? Obviously, do you have enough staff to handle that? Because I assume you're going to hit the wall pretty soon here with requests. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, once, once, once they get all the trees out, they're going to start coming back in and start building. And once they contact their insurance and everything else, you know, obviously if it's a, if it's a person that can afford it, they won't need to break, but we've got a lot of people out there. I'm, I'm thinking that it's taking some damage. That's going to need, need whatever help they can get. I guess I'm just trying to look at the process here. They're still going to have to fill out a complete application for a building permit. Your but office it, will take that and have to process it. And then, so traditionally, we have an inspector go out after the project is completed and make sure, as Commissioner Jensen had mentioned, that meets our codes. And that would have to still still occur. But if they've got a building permit, like Commissioner Jensen mentioned a uh, year ago, we would have a copy of that on file. We could just pull that and replicate that pretty fast. Okay. On, on some of them, you'll have those on file, so you could duplicate. But the big thing. All is right. So my be question is: the two hundred fifty thousand that you're estimating on a million dollars worth of damage. Uh, is not an additional cost necessarily to the county, which uh, I don't know how you would inspect a million dollars worth of damage in a real timely fashion. Uh, you have one inspector, Richard, right? Or how many? You No, you have an, another guy that does inspections, right? Yeah, we've got a contractor inspector, but the, the damage that was assessed was done by the, by two, calling in 211 and calling the Department yeah, I'm not of worried Equalization about the, and yeah, all that. It, it's not my no, office. I'm just worried about if we waive the permit fee. And we say we're not going to go out and inspect the properties. 
No. You know, then we've got a little bit of an issue with are they built, rebuilt then, then back we'd have the code? The liability. Yeah. Did they build it differently than they had before? Which I don't care as long as they describe that in a permit. But if we're not going to check it like we do all permits, that concerns me just a little bit. I yeah, still no. think, you know, it's it's an expense, obviously, and that's an expense to the county, but it's also to the personnel. Because one ins inspector that you have on a contract able to handle this in a timely fashion, I guess it it's, uh, well, I'll, I'll equate it to an electrical inspection, inspection ahead of my guard that was a year and a half late. <laughs> so, you know. Is yeah, that I, an issue that we take it over a longer period of time for the inspections and we still cover it? I, I'm thinking I haven't talked to the inspector, but I don't think that would be a, a, an issue. And if it's something where we needed to get another inspector in, that's something we could possibly look at also. We've, we've never had to use two inspectors at one time. But. I guess what I would like to do today is, is approve waiving the permit fees on the storm damage buildings and permits and then have an additional discussion when we figure out exactly how we would handle those inspections. And obviously not in the permit fee, because there isn't any, but how we would handle it as a county expense. Because, I mean, during, it's more than one trip, but they, they go during construction also. Yeah, depending on the type of the building. If it's, yeah. a, if it's a pole barn, it's one inspection after it's done. And we're, we're thinking a lot of these would be the ag, ag buildings, so that'd be one inspection, which would be a hundred dollars per per permit for a, for an ag type building. But if it's one of them large dairy buildings that's totally destroyed, that takes at least three inspections. And of course, right. if it's a residence that requires any structural, that's at least two, if not three, inspections. You know, we're not talking brand new. I, well, at least I don't. I haven't heard of a brand new house being totally destroyed. But then there's three inspections on a new house. I guess by uh, again, my point is, is we we could take time to establish what it'll cost us to go out and do those inspections. Well, what we would do is issue the permits, no right. cost, and the inspection fee. They'd still have to be inspected, and then we'll have to figure out how to pay the inspector. The county will just have to figure out how we're going to do it because I don't want uninspected buildings out no, there. To be honest no. with you, that would be that would be bad business. Bob, um, do you, do you think we need a, a time limit? Or something like this. Yeah, most most definitely. I mean, if if not in 2002, I still had people coming in like 2005 and 2006 wanting wanting to do it. So no, right. you need to put a time limit, either 12 months or 18 months, and that's the deadline. But I mean, would, would be my recommendation. There's some guys I've heard already that overhead door they're waiting till September, October yeah. to even get an overhead door put in. So I mean, right, but we can get the permit. You, you know, applying for the permit, you know, within 12 months, even if it takes another couple of years to build. And whatever deadline, either 12 months or 18 months, whichever one you want to put on it, that's fine as long as they've applied for the permit by the end of that. If we need to extend one for, like, the inspection time, then we could we could extend, extend that. And so. maybe, maybe what we would do is say that permit, permits applied for on or before December 31st of 2023 for damage related to the storm. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking too. So, all right. So, uh, an amendment. I think we can offer an amendment to that would be good to put a time limit on it. I don't know, Commissioner Pierce, you want to do that? I would move to amend the motion to read that we would waive building permit fees for damage caused by the storm as long as the application for the permit is filed on or before December 31st of 2023. Is there a second? Second. Second. Further discussion? So, but just to make sure everybody understands that it's not just because there's no fee doesn't mean you, you don't need a building permit. So, And, and if the building is not related and that isn't damaged due to storm damage, the, the, it's yeah. going to cost you to get a building permit. You exactly. come to the, to so, the office. Okay. Uh, all in favor on the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Most amendment carries. Back to the original action as amended. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, letters double Bs, Brookings County. Grants policy. 
Um, first, we have this on a table, so we need an action to remove it from the table. Is there a motion to remove the trade book? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. It's off the table. Now we have action to approve the Brookings County Grants Policy. There was a motion made by Bartley and seconded by Krogman on May 3rd. Comments and discussion? I um, updated the language. I think we needed just, you know, st stronger wording that all grants need to come to the commission prior to approval. So I added um, no grant application may be submitted or grant dollars received without commission approval. That was the new addition to the, the policy. All right. Is there comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Letter CC, April approval of detention center inmate housing contract language. Uh, there was consensus to approve the contract. Any, any discussion or comments on that? We just plugged in the changes. Uh, the Assurance Alliance has also looked at it. Uh, so I think we're ready for approval. Okay. So is this an action item then? I just, it doesn't say an action. I don't think it needs official action. I think if there's a consensus, I mean, the action will come when we actually have a county to sign this contract. I think it was just, there's been so much discussion about the wording of the contract that I think it was brought forward to make sure that the co commission is now comfortable with the language of the contract. Action will come when we have counties that sign up okay. with Marty. It's my understanding. I have no objection. There's consensus. We're good. Sheriff is okay with it. <laughs> All right. Do you have some completed ready to submit already? or yeah. Do you have some committed and going to submit already? or? All right. Number nine, Commission Department Director's Report. Stacey. Our veterans for both March and April were included with my report. You can see them there. Um, we did, the day after the storm, um, I was working with Chairperson Borsma to get our emergency um, resolution in place. Let's zoom in here. And I, I handed that out this morning so that you... Sorry, I'm zooming in on that. But that was done um, right away after the storm to get that process moving forward. Um, so I just wanted you to have a chance to see that. And then um, back to my back to my report with the the uh, approval of the union contracts and those lous um, earlier here in the meeting um, we'll be making a july 1 pay plan adjustment for all employees um, with commissioner borsma being absent this week we're going to wait to officially make that pay plan adjustment at the next meeting so what i will be what you will see is an amending resolution to our official pay plan resolution that was adopted, I believe, back in December of 21 for this year. So um, if anyone has any questions or if department heads are listening and want to reach out to me after the meeting, feel free. But I, I just needed some time to um, adjust or to draft that pay plan resolution and then also action to approve those LOUs was needed as well before we we um, approved it for the full for the full county for full county staff. So um, I'll be working that on that here in the next couple of weeks. Um, no official date set yet, but I'll be working with Marty and Dave Beitler, our jail administrator, to get a uh, open house for phase two of the jail project scheduled. Probably looking at the end of June, we want to make sure everything's buttoned up and that the um, punch list has been complete and whatnot, and we're we're comfortable with moving forward. So 
kind of keep that on your radar that we'll be setting a date here uh, shortly. I did provide you some pictures along with my staff report, Nancy Stewart with the Daughters of the American Revolution provided um, some photos of out at the Madari Monument that they installed a bench out there. And I have actually was out there with, um, with Todd Everson with safety benefits to take a look at the monument um, last week. And that bench looks really, really nice out there. So um, she had just provided uh, some of those pictures. Um, the last thing, Sean's already out here. He, we're gonna discuss um, a, a flyover, pictometry flyover after the storm event. So I'll have, let Sean give his spiel. So earlier this, oh no, it's only Tuesday. Last week, I was uh, contacted by BMU asking about a <coughs> supplemental flyover to assess the damage in, um, in Brookings. Um, <clears throat> their main concern is in the Three Mile Joint Jurisdiction area because that's where the majority of their infrastructure that may have sustained some damage was. Um, I have since spoke to the city of Brookings and also our, our GIS person, Brandon, um, and we, <clears throat> and it, it seems that there is some interest in it. I have also talked to Bob who expressed that there, there would be some value to them. Um, and I also spoke with uh, Brian who, unfortunately the, the areas that we'd be looking at wouldn't really provide much benefit to the highway department. Um, looking at price, we are getting a deal, but that doesn't justify the expenditure if it isn't worth it to the county. Um, we're looking at between 72 and 75 square miles uh, of basically area that would be reflown over um, at the resolution that, the, the higher resolution that we pay for um, every three years. <clears throat> the total price for this, if we went with 75 miles, would be about $15,000. Um, if we went with the minimum, which is the city of Brookings plus the joint jurisdiction area, uh, is 72 square miles, so it would be $14,400. We pay about $200 per square mile. Um, if we were to look at doing the entire county, it is completely unreasonable and far too much. It, we're not going to spend over $100,000 for something that we literally had done earlier this year. That was my question. They did a fly, did they complete the flyover? That they, be... they completed the flyover uh, this spring. So we have that latest pictometry. It is actually up on Beacon now um, with the 2022 imagery. Um, it, it would just be, and this is something where if, if we decided we weren't interested in participating, I would still give it to BMU and the city to see if that was something that they'd be interested in doing on their own. Um, obviously, with fewer entities, the split becomes more expensive, um, but that's, if we don't get a benefit from it, if the county doesn't get a benefit, there, there isn't too much of a reason to really do it. So normally we do a split with BMU, city. And E911. And E911. And so are they asking that we would do that same split for this $15,000 if we decided to? Is that? Um, I That's what I'm hoping for. Initially, we were looking at around 52 square miles, which, which put it at uh, $10,400. The recent, uh, the recent joint jurisdiction area went out to uh, 72 square miles, which is why we're looking at almost $15,000. Um, we were looking at adding potentially a couple other areas, Sinai and uh, Bruce, to get a look at the shops that were damaged and the, and, uh, uh, well, in, in the surrounding area in those towns. Um, but unfortunately, the information we're going to get from that isn't really going to be valuable to the highway department. Most of the valuable pictures they're going to get are going to be from the ground. 
Are you saying fifteen thousand dollars is what our cost would be? Or that would be the total price? price. That'd be the total. So we'd pay a portion of the fifteen thousand. Yep. If the other entities were willing to participate, BMU is almost certainly willing. I haven't heard from the city about their interest. I, I spoke to their GIS person, and they pa he passed it on to Mr. Struck, who then passed <laughs> it on to uh, City Administrator Brazino. So who is it that asked us to do the flyover? Uh, I don't remember his name, an a, uh, engineering person with uh, BMU. What's the time frame for this flyover? When would they do it? I mean, most of the damage is going to be cleaned up, I would assume. So the company is currently flying over McCook County, so they have a plane in the area. Um, so time is important. If we decide to wait a couple weeks, the plane will no longer be in the area. And then we're looking at the cost of a redeployment and a bunch of other stuff. So it's, it's either a, a do it now or, or don't do it. So what's our advantage to having aerial photos versus people who are doing ground photos? Is there an advantage to equalization to say this building wasn't there in our last picture and well, it was it, there and now it's not there in the new picture? Well, and, and we're still going to be able to see that exactly. because we have the imagery from earlier this spring. So if there's a building there in spring 2022 and it, it is no longer there now, that's going to be pretty obvious. The There's some value to looking at infrastructure damage, uh, but beyond that, I, I'm not well-versed enough in the utilization of GIS to confidently say that we're going to get X benefit out of it, I guess. I, I just think that um, if we're going to do our normal split of the cost, we're not talking that big of a dollar, and we ought to participate in that because even though uh, the city or BMU will receive maybe more benefit than the county will, of course, the people that live in the city of Brookings also live in Brookings County, and I think we should participate in it from that perspective. And we're not talking about if we're doing our regular split, but if one of those other entities, I'm not sure about E911, but the, if either the city or BMU doesn't want to participate in the cost, then I don't see a reason why we would do that. I, I have not talked to E911 about it. They are normally the fourth participant mm -hmm. um, in this this split. I, I don't know who the point of contact would be there, nor do I know if it's something that they would really be interested in. They don't have in. a meeting scheduled for quite a while. Yeah, we, we just met the new budgets and, last uh, week, and that was it. But uh, we our next meeting is until Ju July, July. So we're not that, that E911 probably not going to be able to my guess is it's going to be the three entities three other entities that are probably going to uh you know share the cost in this if we want to yep okay so this is obviously not on the agenda um, no this have would to get a consensus to move forward and then put it on the other agenda for approval down the road yep. and the way this would once i get um but if you guys give the consensus to move forward and I hear from the city that they're willing to participate at their anticipated one-third cost and BMU is willing to participate at their estimated cost, um, most likely I would, I would have to contact the company immediately mm -hmm. to get them to uh, basically line up the plane to fly over here. What you'd probably be approving is the claim for paying for it because we won't have time to wait until June 9th for the commission to approve doing the project because at that point the plane is no longer in the area, then it's going to cost exponentially more yeah, to, to get them back here. Um, normally in the past we've paid $360 per square mile. Um, we're, because the plane is already deployed, we're looking at $200 per square mile. Everybody okay then? Consensus to, I guess what I would say this is if the other two are willing, yep. we'd be willing. If the other two decide not to, then I think, you know, the benefit is more for them. We'll play, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and do our part, but if they're not interested, I don't think we would be. And we're talking about the 15000 uh, yep. yep. Um, Is that, so 15000 does include um, Sinai and Bruce. Um, 
So do you want that? Well, we would just split whatever they fly three ways. Okay. If well, it's 10,000 and it's 4,500 approximately a piece or something, I, you know, again, it's whatever the bill is, we'll split it. Okay. So I don't know if, if Brian's not interested in signing up, Bruce, and I would take it out. Okay. So whatever the cost is, is just splitting it three ways. They have to approve splitting it three ways. And the other thing I think that needs to happen is you need to let all three entities know when the flyover is going to happen because if it all of a sudden is, well, we're not done in McCook County for five more days, it really becomes less value to us. Most yep. of it's going to be cleaned up. Yep, and uh, I, I believe they were planning on finishing McCook County over this past weekend, uh, but I, I will visit with the our, our representative to ensure that. To me, the value of this is the immediate reaction to getting a plane to fly if it's not quick then it, yep. the value then starts to drop off pretty goes, rapidly yeah. yep i understand all right i think we're good okay the only other thing that i had is just your upcoming dates um offices are closed on monday with the memorial day holiday um there's an empl uh, employee appreciation celebration on june 6th out at the bcoac <laughs> from 11 to 2 I'd be hearing some more about that. Um, otherwise, the only other thing that was an addition um, that we got from Dustin, and it was part of his report as well, but June 20th at 5.30 p.m. is the BCOAC Volunteer Appreciation Night. If you want to att attend that event, um, let Dustin know because he'll be ordering food and needs a kind of a, he needs a head count. So um, please let him know. Of that, otherwise, that is all I have. State's Attorney Dan, nothing to report. All right. Uh, Eleven is Commissioner reports. Commissioner Pierce, would you like to start? I would. On May sixth, I attended the our special commission meeting for contract negotiations, um, and then I left to go on vacation, and the whole county blew up. <laughs> So I came back home. Anyway, other than that, so I don't have a whole lot to report. I've been working on the courthouse tree project, and I did work some with Lori and Jenna on our um, ballots for publication, and those I think Jenna said will be published countywide on June 1st. So that's all I have to report. All right. All right. Commissioner Bartley. Okay. On the 3rd, the Planning Commission met, and we approved those today. 17th, I attended the Optimist Law Enforcement Breakfast. It was well attended. It had a lot of people there, and it was a great award for, uh, uh, can't remember her name now, Dan? Lynn nope. Kramer. Lynn Kramer's award uh, for the Law Enforcement Official of the Year. And then, uh, so more around the storm, I, I helped Bob out with the Red Cross trailer a little bit. On the 19th, we had a jail meeting. And uh, everything's on, on schedule. They're optimistic. They're going to finish on time. And uh, if I looked at it, I wouldn't have said that. But uh, they got a lot of people in there, a lot of bodies working. So I, I'm anticipating that they will be on time. On the, uh, just as a, a notice, June 13th, the Planning Commission will meet again. on. That's a Monday night for a comp plan review. Uh, that might be of interest to the people. That's a couple weeks away, but we don't... Uh, we have a meeting on the Thursday before because of the election before that. So uh, that'll be a joint meeting with the City Planning Commission. That's my report. Mr. Dennis. I also can uh, negotiations uh, participate with that. Breaking for the 20th Street overpass. Uh, it was uh, started out our storm events but we got good rain that day and it was moved to the Dactronics and it was well attended um, thank you to Dactronics for hosting that uh, at a short notice and they did a good job of uh, presenting everything on the 12th was the storm uh, on the 13th uh, at the out at the emergency operations center for a little bit that morning on the 16th um, Headed to the NACO conference in Alaska on Monday. I uh, had the opportunity to sit by uh, Dusty Johnson on the way. Um, main to topic was uh, 
the infrastructure money that be coming towards the states. Um, said there'll be a lot of money. Uh, like to see it spent. Um, be encouraged. Uh, uh, we talked a little bit uh, about bridge builders and such being a shortage. Um, encouraged, uh, if possible, uh, the larger culverts, box culverts, and and different applications uh, to improve our roadways. Uh, on um, Tuesday, um, participated in a tour. Uh, started in Anchorage. Uh, it was a, <coughs> up to Seaward, um, small community up there. Um, basically went to all their departments within the small town. Um, one of the big deals they'd had there was an avalanche a week, well, about three days before we got there. And there's a small community or borough just south there, about two miles, and an avalanche had occurred. Um, the avalanche was about 400 feet long on this roadway and about 400 feet deep. Uh, they'd been working three days with two large excavators, and uh, they had about half done, they figured. Um, they had somewhat of an emergency. They had uh, obtained permits from the state. Uh, they obtained all those. Uh, one of the local uh, barge operators, they were hauling vehicles from that community to Seaward, and people were having to take their boats to Seaward to get to work. So it was quite the deal. Uh, a lot of a lot of community work with the city, the state, and everybody working together there. But um, also, uh, they had a, a large project um, that their governor secured for them. They were requesting $10 million, and it was a process in uh, place to divert some water uh, that yearly would flow through this uh, one small tunnel and cause damage to a bridge. And uh, the governor secured them $185 million to complete this project. Um, the project uh, is to be completed within the next two years, and they're going to put a larger tunnel in. And so uh, basically uh, securing that this uh, other road doesn't overflow and damage the small town. But that uh, was uh, pretty neat to see. Um, we toured uh, basically the whole town. The port where the ships come in, they're doing uh, they received some grants to upgrade the port. Um, they realized in the last two years how important that uh, the cargo coming in, uh, if the ships don't show up or whatever, if within three, four days, you start noticing in the, sh in the stores immediately. Uh, they were in short supply, and basically they're trying to be more self-sufficient uh, themselves. On uh, Wednesday, uh, basically had a, a business meeting right away in the morning, very well attended. Uh, the room was overflowing, and uh, they were really impressed with all many people that had showed up. Um, in short, uh, we went to, a, on Wednesday afternoon, an we went to uh, tour the Mat Matunuska Experimental Farm and Extension Center. Uh, it's very interesting. It's somewhat like SDSU. It's it's state owned. Um, like I said, they're trying to be more self sufficient. Um, they they have uh, developed over a hundred different varieties of potatoes that grow in that area. They're working on developing a uh, an alfalfa that would be able to survive the the weather up there and the frost and uh, a lot of different, a lot of different things. Uh, in, they've uh, invasive species. They have those up there also. Uh, they've done some work on a couple lakes up there and they invested two million in these two lakes to just take care of the invasive species. Um, like they said, they, they're promoting local, um, trying to get more people involved. They've also the state is. Uh, um, purchased uh, from the federal government, they purchased uh, 100,000 acres to be uh, sold as in 100-acre tracks uh, to people interested in farming. Uh, it was interesting that uh, the cost would be $400 an acre. 
Uh, the big cost was it cost you about three thousand dollars an acre to clear the trees off to be able to uh, to farm the the area. But uh, they're trying to pr promote production in there. Um, next day there was another meeting. Uh, a lot of a lot of things to preserve the clean water infrastructure, uh, protection from wildland wildland fires, um, and just basically to promote a safe and healthy communities. Um, also, it was interesting, uh, Alaska, 9% of their population are veterans, also. And um, we had a work, also had a workshop, uh, implementation, the implementation of the 988 suicide lifeline, uh, very important up in their area. Um, they really had a counselor. Uh, they, he was basically, his title is a deep bush counselor. Um, this is the areas where there's uh, basically uh, no roads, uh, travels either by snow machine or airplane, and uh, basically some parts of the year up there, uh, it gets below 40 degrees, uh, snow machines can't go any longer, and if it gets down to 60 below, airplanes are not flying. So um, they rely on uh, local people to be able to counsel these people and uh, they're hoping this 988 suicide lifeline, if, if they have uh, cell service, they can uh, get called a call in. Uh, and that's one thing that's really impressed me throughout the whole time up there. My phone worked great. I don't understand it out in the middle of nowhere, and your phone works super. Uh, but uh, also, uh, with being self sufficient, there was three universities up there. Uh, each university ha uh, have Votex that are actually attached to the, the university. There was 13 Votex in the area, and uh, they're they're focused on the communities that they serve, uh, from uh, maintenance on uh, large boats to alternative energy to uh, just a lot of different uh, things that uh, to work within the community. Um, applying for a lot of grants uh, up in the area also. Um, on Thursday, I attended a workshop. It was interesting. On uh, It was an election workshop and uh, toured their uh, facility there in Anchorage, which is uh, the, main, the main place in Alaska. And uh, they do mail-in voting there. And it was interesting, they sent out 210,000 ballots were sent out. Uh, of those 210 ballots, they're sent out to every registered voter. Um, 18,000 were not undeliverable, which was, I can see where that could happen. Uh, they had, have improved their voter turnout from around 20% to close to 30%. And uh, they basically, have uh, these large boxes that are uh, cemented to a large piece of concrete and put in the, throughout the communities, the small communities, and uh, they start picking those up, uh, somewhat like our early voting, but uh, they're distributed out throughout the whole territory. Uh, and their voter uh, validation is basically on your signature. Uh, so. That's how that went. Uh, we toured the building. It was interesting that uh, it just uh, looked like a large warehouse to me. Uh, there was a few cages with uh, locks on their computers, and all the wiring was self-contained within the building, um, showing where the wires went. It was a security measure. There's uh, uh, no where each wire went, and it basically uh, the public is welcome to enter that building. There is a viewing area just similar to what we have, um, and we toured that facility. Other uh, meeting I did attend was a closing meeting, and uh, one of the deals was uh, by a conservation district, it's a natural resource conservation, uh, promoting sam salmon habitat, soil health, uh, flood prevention, watershed protection, 
Uh, and uh, there's also a, uh, a grant out there. They're moving some, some of the, a lot of the homes were built in floodplains, and they're actually a grant out there now that they're moving the houses out of the floodplains uh, to a more favorable area. And uh, that was it. Then it took me about two days to get home. So that's all I have. All right, thank you. And one of uh, um, the attendees throughout uh, throughout the U.S., from Hawaii, you name it, uh, everywhere, uh, they really did like our governor. That's what <laughs> the majority of the people said. Uh, but uh, it was it was well attended and uh, it was informational. So, all right. Well, um, my couple weeks were groundbreaking at Dectronics. Uh, it was a quick quick move there for the downpour. And then on the thirteenth, I met with uh, Commissioner Jensen and Commissioner Borsma and and Bob Hill at the East Fire Station. There, um, uh, we were able to keep that going with the generator that Bob's, Bob has there. And so we had electricity, and we had systems. The city opened up a, a call line, which they then also took county calls. So it, uh, we got there early in the morning, and they were up and running early, and it went really well, I think. The collaboration was very good. The communication was good, being in the same place. Uh, appreciate all of Bob's work and his time there. He spent a lot of time there coordinating everything, and obviously the highway department and all of our county employees uh, did a really good job. So I uh, was there in the morning and then was cleaning up my own stuff after that in the, in the afternoon. But then on the 17th, um, went to the Appreciation for Law Enforcement breakfast and then Kramer received her award, well-deserved. Uh, on the 19th, we had an E911 budget meeting um, and, uh, and we didn't finalize it. We're going to finalize it the next meeting. We had some discrepan discrepancies in that, but uh, there is, uh, we have a, a rule or a, I don't know what you call it, ordinance or a policy that we need to have at least $30,000 in our reserves for the E911, and we are falling below that with expenses that we have. And so uh, our costs, our portion of the cost will probably go up this next budget to replenish that to get to that $30,000 level. So you'll probably see that. Um, we just were waiting for the numbers of what our portion is and what the city's portion is. So that was had to be figured out yet. And so we'll be passing that budget, I'm guessing, next meeting in July and stuff too for that. So, And then had the BCOAC meeting um, yesterday, and uh, um, numbers are, are good. They're, it's just going to slow down now because of summer. People are going to be, you know, shooting uh, their bows outdoors now and uh, going to the outdoor uh, ranges, which is certainly good. But uh, Numbers have been very good, and we're continuing to uh, keep uh, um, keep up with maintenance. Uh, Arden made a comment that uh, a lot of the people that are coming to shoot in the gun range really enjoy it and, and really are appreciative of the facility, the new lighting, uh, all the improvements that we made. And uh, he just wanted to thank the commission and the commissioners for us investing in that facility and investing in the in the pistol range there because he says uh, he said the people that come there just really like it and really are appreciative of how uh, nice a facility that we do have. So he wanted to pass that on to the commission. So otherwise, that's all I have. So last on the agenda is number twelve, executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law one dash twenty five dash two. Numbers one, four, and six, personnel, contract negotiation, and security. Is there a motion to enter into executive session? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll take about a five, ten minute break to uh, use the rest.